for an opening statement. We're here to go beyond the headlines. We're here to sift through the speculation and the hearsay. Here's just one of my favorite headlines, which asks, is Facebook forming a crypto mafia as Libra Foundation members boost each other's businesses? Washington must go beyond the hype and ensure that it's not the place where innovation goes to die. Just because we may not fully understand a new technology proposal, proposal does not mean we should immediately call for its prohibition, especially when that proposal is just that, a proposal. But let's face it, let's be honest, it's Facebook. And I'm skeptical, but we can either make you a political talking point or we can choose to conduct thoughtful governmental oversight. That's my hope for this day, is it's thoughtful government oversight. The reality is, whether Facebook is involved or not, change is here. Digital currencies exist. Blockchain technology is real. And Facebook's entry in this new world is just confirmation, albeit at scale. The world that Satoshi Nakamoto, author of the Bitcoin white paper, envisioned and others are building, is an unstoppable force. We should not attempt to deter this innovation, and governments cannot stop this innovation. And those that have tried have already failed. So the question then becomes, what are American policymakers going to do to meet the challenges and the opportunities of this new world of innovation? Some politicians want us to live in a permission-based society, where you need to come to government, ask for its blessing before you can begin to even think about innovating. Those are those are the politicians that would rather kill it before it grows. But there are others who believe in the vibrancy of American ingenuity, American innovation, that recognizes our economy is built off of generations of entrepreneurs and innovators through competition, through testing, through tinkering, through iterating, got us here today. To be clear, it's not about advocating for a break it and figure it out later approach, but when it comes to finances, we must ensure that consumers and investors are protected. So, Mr. Marcus, let's get to work. Let's have that conversation. Let's answer those questions. Instead of a knee-jerk reaction of banning something before it begins, my Republican colleagues and I want to first try and understand it. And in turn, based off what we learn, determine whether or not our current regulatory framework meets the demands of this new technology. That's why we're here today. Look, I don't have a crystal ball. I have no idea if liberal will lead to greater financial inclusion, lower remittance costs, which have the opportunity and would mean families could send money to each other uh, more cheaply and e easily than today, or if it's just a ploy to shoot Facebook's Twitter mentions through the roof. We'll see. But what I do know is this. Republicans stand ready to work with innovators to successfully implement responsible technology here in the United States, here domestically, before we lose out to other countries around the world. So I ask my colleagues, on both sides of the aisle, to join together in supporting innovation, ingenuity, and the entrepreneurial spirit that this nation was founded upon. I'm grateful for this hearing. I called on uh, Chairman Waters to uh, have this hearing a month ago, and this is a bipartisan approach to oversight. And with that, I'd like to yield the balance of my time to Mr. Hill. I thank the ranking member. This time